Hello everybody, my name is Jeff. I'm the founder and developer of the Tesla Wireless Company. And what I'd like to share with you today that I have here are two items. Uh, we have the conventional stationary spark gap and we have the rotary spark gap. Now both of these items were used in the days of spark gap transmitters. This was a technology used before even vacuum tubes. Uh, the spark gap transmitter consisted of a telegraph key, a high voltage spark coil, a condenser or which we call today a capacitor bank, a tuning coil which consists of a primary and secondary coil that were coupled with each other and adjustable for the desired frequency that they want to transmit at and last but not least the conventional stationary spark gap. Anyway both of these were used in the days of early spark gap transmitters and this was around 1917. Anyway uh, the thing about the stationary spark gap is that when they transmitted everything the person transmitting the signal and especially the person receiving signals, they would hear more of a sputtering noise to decipher between dots and dashes in the Morse code and everything. And at times this was caused a problem because of uh, distance, propagation, uh, reception, and everything else. So I'll continue talking about the rotary spark gap now as to why they switched over to the rotary spark gap. The rotary spark gap uh, is a very unique piece of uh, equipment. It greatly improved the, uh, the signal as far as the person receiving the, the Morse code signals and as far as dots and dashes simply because it would generate more of a musical tone. So it made it very easy to decipher between dots and dashes when the person was, rec was receiving it. And the reason why is because we have an electric motor that's spinning this disc at a high rate and everything else and then when it, when it completes the circuit, the tank circuit, it, when the electrodes would line up, it would spark, and when it don't line up, of course, it won't spark, but this is a high rep rate, and this would give them more of a musical tone as far as the person receiving the signals. This particular rotary spark gap was very similar to the ones they used back in the old days, but uh, since I made it in my workshop, I did a lot of refinements to it, a lot of modifications, upgrades, and everything else. Uh, I incorporated a lot of features in it to greatly improve and enhance the performance of rotary spark cap should do and everything and I use it a lot on my Tesla coil so anyway starting from the front I have stationary spark gaps here which I call uh, safety gaps and what they do is if the high voltage should ever reach a certain point instead of arcing throughout the piece of equipment here and damaging it they would go arc to ground I have it going down through a bus bar underneath here going to a ground connection here so that's that's that as far as the sh stationary gaps right here or electrodes uh, I have tungsten tips on them and everything because they would have a, a tendency to get really red hot, sometimes even white, running at a high RPMs, running at very long times and everything else. So the, I put these great big huge heat sinks on here so to be very, very, very efficient uh, heat transfer, uh, thermal coefficiency. Uh, the property of that works very well because I have huge heat sinks here that dissipates the heat and large uh, sized metal here with the stocks that holds the electrodes on here and it dissipates the heats as well and it works out very well even though I have tungsten tips on it. As far as the rotating disc here which is made out of black phenolic it was all machined and everything and I still even have tungsten tips on uh, as far as the electrodes on the rotating wheel itself. Uh, all these uh, electrodes on here that are on this rotating disc here are not perfectly 90 degrees uh, they're offset a little bit and that was done purposely for a reason so that way the capacitor in the tank circuit will have more time to discharge and charge before the next cycle would come around. So it would be more of an efficient quenching and it worked out very well. These particular stationary uh, electrodes, uh, they do slide up and down, they're completely adjustable and, what that, and the purpose of that is in relation to this rotating wheel, I'm able to change the timing length or the, the length of the spark and everything during the time of operation and I can definitely notice the difference as far as performance. This uh, uh, whole unit right here uh, had a lot of meticulous machine done to it uh, for accuracy and performance and everything. There's a lot of precision involved here and so forth and balancing. Balancing is a key uh, issue here on rotary spark gaps because especially this motor is spinning at 3400 RPM you want to make sure you have good balancing. Very very important. You want everything to stay together. So, And uh, that was uh, very well accomplished. I have a, made a collar here and everything for this wheel to be adaptable to the shaft of the motor and it works out very well. This particular motor here is a regular uh, synchronous motor that was converted and modified over to saline pulse synchronous. Now what I mean by that is this motor here stays perfectly locked and in line on the line frequency of 60 cycles. 
If I were to turn this on and spin it up with a mark on the wheel and put a strobe light up to it, it would stay perfectly still. Even though the synchronous motors do the same thing, they will have a tendency to drift, even especially under load. But this particular motor here, since it's been modified for a sailing pulse synchronous, it stays locked right on the line frequency even with a load on it, So, which is good. So which gives, opens up another door for a feature and uh, performance and everything. Uh, this particular motor, I have two handles on here. It's rotatable uh, on a pivotable base. And by doing that, uh, in, 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 in essence, I'm changing the timing of the dwell, like the dwell in a distributor in a car. You move it one way or the other, clockwise or counterclockwise, you're advancing it, retarding it. Same thing applies here. And, uh, and it definitely makes a difference on where it fires and reverses uh, in perspective to here or down here and everything. So I think that works out very well and it's been proven and I actually see a performance difference on that too as well. Also on the back here, I put a degree wheel on here so that way when I do move the rot I mean, rotate the motor and everything, I will know exactly where I'm at as far as reference where I was before and where I'm going to, how many degrees and so forth. And I can lock it down to where I see the best performance. Uh, I have a lot of good features about this. Uh, as far as the circuitry, this type of motor requires a capacitor to start uh, in the circuitry. So when you first fire it up, the motor is in the circuit and then it has to be taken out of the circuit and everything. So what I have here, I have a logic circuit on here that I built. And when you first turn on the uh, machine, uh, actually when you first apply power to it, there's a red neon light that comes on to let you know there's power applied to this thing before you do anything, before you turn on anything. And then I think when I turn it on, this red light will come on, the, capac uh, the motor will start spinning, the capacitor is in the circuit at the time during initial startup, and then after two seconds, the time delay relay will click over, and after that it will energize this other relay, and uh, it, a blue light will come on, let me know the relay is energized, the red light will go off, the green light will come on, and that tells me the transfer has been completed. The yellow light on top of the tower here, it blinks at every 540 revolutions per minute and that tells me that the motor is up to speed, uh, it's where it should be and everything. I have a sensor uh, a circuit on here that picks up the pulses from the motor and that's how it knows to blink at every 540 revolutions per minute. So it works out very well. Uh, this motor right here, I put a Jones connector on here for quick change outs. I have another motor just like this uh, as a backup so in case something should ever happen to it. It's a very quick change and everything. That's why I put the Jones connector on here for quick change outs. I have grounded everything uh, with this ground strap right here on the motor. So just in case any high voltage comes across on the shaft of the motor, I don't want the windings to burn out from the high voltage so everything goes to ground the way it should be. And it works out very well. It's a very nice piece of equipment and it turns out very well. It's definitely the hot ticket for a good performing rotary spark yet. And for all you Tesla coil enthusiasts out there, that use rotary spark gaps in your coils and everything. This is the hot ticket. Um, the way I've built and constructed this, I have many features and options for as far as t uh, curving and tuning the performance of the coil, of the tank circuit and everything else because of how this works. I know this uh, rotary spark gap looks like something out of a Jules Verne movie, but I built it that way purposely to give it that effect. So anyway, I will continue on now to give you a full demonstration of how it works and uh, that will conclude our presentation. So what I'm going to do now is to turn on the uh, power and you'll see everything work according to how I explained it and uh, well, we can all observe. As you notice, the yellow light blinking at 540 revolutions per minute. The green light is now on. You can see the blue light on now because the relay has been energized. And right now the motor is spinning at 3400 RPM. It's uh, very well balanced, there's no vibration or anything else, so it works out pretty good. So, there it is. It has a braking system on it, so everything comes down uh, as much as possible. I know the motor spins uh, for a long time before it finally comes to a halt, but uh, the braking is about 50% on the motor. It's, and uh, It's using the capacitor in the circuit. Actually, it puts the capacitor back in the circuit for a braking action on the motor. So. And there it is. So uh, that's my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and, and uh, have a good day. Thank you.